girlfriend and I are so lucky to have found each other. We haven't been together long, but we have a tight bond. We go on a date almost every day and do everything with each other. Our shared passion is the TikTok account we created together to keep up with what's going on in the world and to make sure the world knows what's going on with us. Our account is pretty popular to say the least. Several of our TikToks have gone viral. It's because we look like such a perfect couple on camera. In reality, while our relationship is basically ideal, we do have our problems. Despite that, I think our problems aren't like most people. Or at least we deal with our problems in ways nobody else would think of. That's what makes our love so special. The issue is that some people don't see what we have. The worst one of all is my girlfriend's dad. He's the biggest dirtbag I've ever met. Even his own daughter thinks he's a piece of garbage. It's so obvious that he needs to stop trying to control her life, but apparently, he will never learn. Ever since my girlfriend and I got together, her dad has been against it. More specifically, he's been against me. He hates me to my core, and I don't know what his problem is. At first, I thought he was just being an overprotective father which I can respect, but that's not what it is. He's just a control freak that threw hissy fits whenever he didn't get his way like a toddler would, except it was with a grown man. I've been trying to convince my girl to take more control of her life, but she's got a bunch of walls up when it comes to her father. She's resistant to do anything, and every time I've tried to talk to her about it, she changes the subject. Recently, I took her somewhere there would be no distractions, which was our local crusty diner. We were the only people in there besides the employees, which was perfect, because I needed to get what was weighing on my shoulders for all these months off my chest. It was about 1 in the morning which was the best time to talk about my plan, a way to get her father off our backs for good. What do you want to order? I don't want to eat here. I thought you liked places with dessert. I'll be eating dessert later when we get back to my bedroom. <laughs> this isn't funny, Eric. It's so drafty here. I'd prefer if we ate at McDonald's. Listen, I want to get something off my chest. We need to take action, Sarah. What do you mean? We have to... <sighs> Do something about him. But that's my father! There's no way I could ever do that. Believe me, I've thought about it a lot. I've been dealing with him my entire life. So you admit you want to do it? Yes, but I can't! You hear me? I can't! Maybe you can't, but that's never what I was going to suggest. Wait, what? You mean- I'll do it. No, you don't have to do that for me. But I want to. Nothing would make me happier besides getting constant dessert without that old hag breathing down our necks. But I, I do need you to do one thing for me. Finally, I convinced her to go through with it. I knew she was likely to back out at any moment though, so I made sure we didn't waste any time. The very next night, I went over to her house before her dad got off of work. Then I reminded her of the plan. We knew we would be alone in the house for about an hour, and that was all the time we needed. As soon as we heard him coming through the door, I told my girl to start crying loud enough for the sound to reach downstairs. What the hell? Hey, sweetie, is that you crying? What the? I'm coming! I'll be right there! Just hold on! <sighs> What the hell? Baby, it's me! Daddy! Unlock the door! Open the goddamn door! What's going on in there? Hey! Answer me! Open the door now! That's when he kicked down the door, revealing a dark room with his daughter on the bed suddenly quiet, smiling psychotically. I'm here! What's wrong? Is everything okay? <laughs> Hey, you're starting to scare me. W what's going on with you? This isn't like you. Come on, snap out of it. Talk to me. At least let me know you're in there. Daddy, is that you? Yes, yes, it's me. Daddy's here. Can you please tell me what the hell is going on? Look. <gasps> what's back there? <gasps> <laughs> it's you. What the hell do you want from us? Just stay away from my family, you piece of crap, or I'm calling the cops! People may say I'm not smart, but that plan was executed perfectly. It even made some good content, which happened to be our best TikTok ever. Our lives were so much better after that. 
A terrible weight was lifted from our shoulders, and I taught the love of my life how to take matters into her own hands. For a brief, beautiful moment, things were never better, but like all good things in life, it always comes to an end. First, it was just a few hate comments on our TikTok, but then it eventually got reported to the police. No one will ever know how worthless of a father he is, or was. We unfortunately never got a chance to film our next TikToks, because it wasn't long before they came to tear us apart. This story was inspired by a fatal incident that happened in April of 2021. After committing their heinous crimes as portrayed in the animation, the pair attempted to set the house on fire and take the vehicle to flee, along with the victim's debit card to Salt Lake City. The couple were then found four days later and immediately apprehended, and sentenced to life without parole. But what makes this case more chilling was how they made a TikTok in the aftermath of all the chaos. This is what it looked like. Day three. Day three after. <laughs> Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. cycle. Me and my single mother would film ourselves doing TikTok dance videos before her bipolar disorder kicked in. Things were never the same after my dad left, so I have been living with her ever since, even in my 20s. But when the pandemic arrived, my mother and I became depressed due to all the restrictions. So, with nothing much to do, we turned our attention to TikTok. The need for everyone to express themselves online skyrocketed. When I told my mother about the app, she immediately became interested. Then, one day, I taught my mother a few dance moves which we posted on the app. But almost every time we danced and made videos together, I knew it was coming. Every time the song ended, I knew she was going to lash out and have a tantrum, scaring me the hell away to my room. I would always lock myself in there for long periods of time. Seconds turned to minutes, and then hours. It was like I was held captive and a prisoner in my own home, causing me to only come out when she was asleep. And on the next day, and the day after that, and so on and so forth, it would repeat again and again. She always went berserk and snapped in the middle of every TikTok. It was like she was being possessed, and would always tear down the house by breaking glasses, toppling tables and chairs in the room. After that, she told me to go to my room while constantly ranting. Her words completely distorted. Get the hell out and go to your room now! So, without thinking twice, I ran to my room, locking it to protect myself from her. I crouched <laughs> next to my bed as my body shook in fear. Then, while I was crying, I could hear my mother making so much noise in the living room. It sounded like she was destroying the house. I was afraid that if I didn't move out that she could do something even more drastic, like start a fire. Then, suddenly, the noise stopped, and the house was eerily quiet. As I approached the door, thinking about whether I should take a peek outside, I heard a knock. Then it was followed by an ominous voice telling me to Stay inside your room, no matter what. When I asked my mother why, she told me her boyfriend was coming and didn't want me to interfere. So, I thought for a moment that her transformation was quite abrupt. She had been dating this guy for almost a year now, and to be honest, I didn't know what she saw in him, because she always gave me the creeps whenever they were together. She was head over heels for this guy who was obviously taking advantage of her, but even when I tried to warn my mother, she never listened. It was pretty strange though, because this happened every time her boyfriend was around. So, while keeping the door locked, I asked, Is something wrong? Why can't I join you guys? I swore I heard a growl before she replied and said, Cause we're gonna do stuff, okay? It's none of your damn business, you nosy rodent. For the first time, I was afraid of her, convinced she wasn't the mother I grew up with. Her sudden change of behavior caught me off guard, and this wasn't the end. Later that night, I went back to crying as I was held captive inside my room for hours upon end, and once I heard the sound of snoring, 
The worst part was that I'd starve while waiting for them to finish their business. It was my only chance to leave. So, I would slowly tiptoe on my way to the kitchen area and living room, where my mother and her lover passed out, sleeping beside each other. I remember seeing several bottles of alcohol scattered throughout the coffee table. It was evident that they were pissed drunk and unconscious. I then quietly approached the table, <coughs> but stopped midway when my mother coughed and changed her sleeping position. I waited for her to stay still before grabbing the food and returning to my room quickly. Undetected, I had the only meal I could get my hands on and went to bed soon after. The following day, I heard someone banging at my door. When I came to look closer, my mother cheerily invited me to do our daily TikTok dance. I was disheveled, confused, and couldn't handle this bipolar persona any longer. One moment, she was obsessed and aggressive, and the next she was jovial and optimistic. I would notice that she was kind and gentle whenever her boyfriend was away, <laughs> but whenever he dropped by to stay for the night, she transformed into a different person like Jekyll and Hyde, forcing me to remain in my room while they did more stuff. I was baffled by how that man could change her so much in such a short amount of time. I didn't want this cycle to continue because it was hurting my relationship with her. So, one day, I stood up to her while she was washing the dishes in the kitchen. I approached her saying something like, I've had enough of this. I want you and your boyfriend to break up. He's turning you into a monster. That's when she turned off the faucet and didn't say a word. I couldn't tell what she was thinking, and with her back turned against me, it only made the atmosphere eerier. Then, out of the blue, she grabbed a knife from the knife set and said, Let's make another TikTok! She then started chasing after me. I immediately went to my room and locked the door. I cried, begging her to stop as she constantly stabbed the door. But no matter what I said, her rage and aggression was amplified. She no longer listened to me no matter how much I pleaded for her to stop. Then, all hell broke loose when my mother broke through the door and charged at me. This story was inspired by a true case involving an evil mother who posted a sick TikTok video, claiming to be apologetic and saying she was sorry to her parents because of how bad she messed up. Below is a screenshot of the alleged TikTok. And if things weren't already disturbing, the TikTok was filmed only one month after committing the heinous crime. It was alleged that the woman's motive for her actions was because apparently the victim was getting in the way of her love life. In addition, the woman has since been sentenced along with the boyfriend for his involvement. I moved out of my parents' house in my early 20s. I wanted to live alone so I could learn to be independent. Things were ideal for a while. Aside from working my normal job and going out with my friends, I was always active on TikTok, following trends and tracking my gym progress with whatever dances were becoming popular. I would film a dance in my living room about once a day, but it wasn't long before I started to feel less than safe in my own home. At first, it was just when I was walking through the apartment complex, from my car to my front door, which was on the second floor, because I kept seeing this older Spanish guy that sort of showed up one day. I couldn't tell if he had recently moved in or if he was just some random creep who loitered there a lot, but he always stared me down as I walked by. I completely ignored him. My apartment complex doesn't have security and isn't in the best of areas, so I always spend as little time as possible in the outside area. Of course, like a lot of women, I'm no stranger to creepy dudes with starey prying eyes, so at first it didn't freak me out too bad wasn't until I started seeing him almost every single day that it got under my skin. Just thinking about going anywhere made my blood pressure spike, because I knew I would have to walk by my car with a 99% chance that this guy would be waiting outside in the common area and watch me walk by without looking away or blinking even once. It didn't help that he was unbelievably crusty too, always wearing the same unwashed clothes and looking like he hadn't showered in weeks. After a few weeks, I started seeing him in my dreams. I went crazy over it. One night, I was having so much trouble sleeping that I could barely keep my eyes closed. That's when I looked up at my closet and saw the man's face staring right at me. I felt my heart jumping in my throat, but when I blinked, he disappeared. I couldn't tear my eyes from that spot for so long afterward. I just waited to calm down, hoping beyond hope that I was only hallucinating and he hadn't actually found his way into my apartment. 
Eventually, I pulled my covers over my face and managed to sleep it off. The first thing I did when I woke up was leap out of bed and check to make sure there was nobody in my closet. Thankful, there was nothing there but my clothes, and it didn't look like anybody had been in there rearranging my stuff. I breathed a sigh of relief and went about my day, convinced that I just had an overactive imagination. However, this wasn't a one-time thing. It went on for weeks. Pretty much every other night, I would open my eyes to see his disgusting, terrifying face looking at me from the closet, smiling in the way that some men smile that just make your bones shiver. Each and every time I saw him, I told myself I was seeing things and pulled the covers over my eyes. With every night that I saw him and nothing serious actually happened, I got more and more worried I was going crazy from living alone. I started to think I should get a roommate to ease my mind, but I was very alone at the time. I didn't have friends I was close enough with to feel comfortable talking about what was going on with me, so I kept it bottled up inside until I would cry myself to sleep under the covers whenever I saw him. The sleep I lost over this affected my work too. I got in trouble for being late too often. So one night when I was looking ahead at a couple days off, I tried to stay up all night and sleep early the next night to reset my sleep schedule. I also figured I should record the experience on TikTok, just to have something to do once the exhaustion set in. Before long, my dancing was almost comically bad from how tired I was. Then, I heard a very concerning noise coming from my balcony. It sounded like someone was out there, right on the other side of the door. That's when I heard an eerie male voice making some kind of twisted and audible sound. I can feel my whole body tense up. I wanted to believe I was hearing things now. I slowly approached the door and opened it, just to make sure I wasn't going crazy. And that's when I saw the most disturbing thing that still haunts me to this day. It was the same man standing on my balcony, inches away from me. I sprinted away, screaming, yelling hysterically, saying, Get the hell out of my apartment! I got to my front door and looked back at him as he tried to make his way inside. Get out of here! Somebody help me! To my horror, he just stood there, halfway through the balcony door, staring at me with this blood-curling smirk like he was enjoying the whole thing. I opened my front door and walked backwards into the breezeway. Finally, he retreated to the balcony and closed the door. I then started banging on my neighbor's door while constantly screaming to cause a scene. They came outside confused at first, but they were more than willing to help when I told them what was happening. The cops showed up soon after, and when they went inside my apartment to look for him, he was gone. He already climbed down from the balcony and fled. However, with the amount of time he spent stalking me in the common area in plain view of the security cameras, and with the footage I was able to get of him with my phone, it was easy to track him down. He was probably one of the most recognizable creeps out there. Everything else that came out of the investigation afterwards was just a series of confirmations of all my worst nightmares. He had indeed developed such a severe obsession with me that he climbed up my balcony just to get to me. But that's not even the worst part. The most terrifying thing was that it wasn't the first time he did so by any means. When the police looked deeper into my closet than I usually would, they discovered a horrible number of notes scribbled on the wall and hair follicles matching the man's DNA. That means all the times I thought I was hallucinating, he was actually there. He had been sneaking in through my balcony almost every night just to watch me while I slept. Since then, I've posted the TikTok he barged in on and shared this story with as many people as possible just to raise awareness. The story was inspired by a true story regarding a 25-year-old woman who was filming herself dancing while making a TikTok video. Midway during the TikTok, a man can be seen breaking in and entering the woman's apartment through the balcony door. The woman is seen hysterically screaming and shouting at the man to leave her property while exiting through the front door and knocking on her neighbor's door. The man was later caught and arrested and identified as Angel Gomez, who had been stalking the victim since she moved in. It was alleged that the man had climbed his way up into the building and into the victim's balcony. He has since been hit with an abundance of charges. 